There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Yes, Captain. Give me the readings. Course stable, 7.9 off vertical axis. That's why I can't stand up straight. Speed 2650, steady she goes. How close are we to that asteroid? In range, gravity detector starting to read. Say a hundred thousand, give or take. Piece of cake. We still have to maneuver for a landing. Fuel supply. Well, Captain, let me put it this way. If I was back home in my car, I'd pray for a steep hill so I could put her in neutral and coast all the way down. That bad, huh? I think the expression is running on fumes. What's the terrain? Spectrographics coming in. And? Not too hot, not too cold. Volcanic activity, a million or so years ago. We are hitting atmosphere. Yeah, at least it's got an atmosphere. Much oxygen. I'm trying to get a reading. Deceleration chairs. Just a minute. Now. Better do it, Pete. All right, Myers. I'm going. Firing retro rockets. The fuel tank's empty, Captain. Anybody got a parachute? Hang on. Angle looks good. Thank heaven for small favors. The surface is coming up fast. I'll try to level her out. No, stop. Nobody say anything. I want to remember this magic moment. Oh. Ooh. Everything seems to be in one piece, except for the communications module. And it sounds like we damaged the tail assembly. Instruments are still working. How's the atmosphere? <laughs> Take a reading. 20.95 parts oxygen. Yeah, right. 78.09 parts nitrogen. That's impossible. I don't get it. That's air. Don't look a gift horse in the chops. Gravity. One unit to... Point .99. Are you sure? See for yourself, Captain. I don't believe it. You got something better to believe, Myers? But that's incredible. Conditions identical to Earth, and yet we're 655 million miles away from Earth. Let's get the airlock open. Oh, uh, ho hold up. Hold up, Pete. What for? I'm sick of breathing recirculated air, eating freeze-dried tofu, and we're almost out of that. The instruments could be wrong. What's the difference? We aren't going anywhere for a while. We can't even radio for help till we fix the module. The man has a point. I suppose you're right. At least put on your helmets. Forget it. If this is all she wrote, then I'm ready for it, one way or another. Well, I'm afraid I'm with Pete on this, Captain. Either we die now or we die later, starving to death like dogs. All right, open it. Now, this isn't an order, but... I'd recommend everyone take a very deep breath. Time, the future. Place, a dark corner of the universe millions of miles from planet Earth. The main characters, three men. William Weber, captain. Peter Kirby, navigator. Carl Myers, geologist and science consultant. Each distinct from the others, but all sharing a common dilemma. They are lost. 
And like any long-haul explorers, they want to go home. Not their home, necessarily. That would be too much to hope for. But at this point, any old port in a storm will do. Especially for those who have veered off course and into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Elegy, starring Blair Underwood with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Captain's Notes. We've made a rough landing, but no injuries. According to our instruments, the atmosphere is breathable, so we've opened the airlock. It's hard to believe, but the temperature is that of a spring day on Earth. And the... <laughs> it smells clean. Well, I'll be. Get the ladder into position. Watch a step. How many miles did you say we were from Earth? Too many. Time for a reality check. You see the same thing I see, Captain? What do you see? Open country, farmland, Kirby. Affirmative. Acres of grass, trees. I grew up in a place like this, in the Midwest. And those hills, they're settled granite, I'm sure. Eroded over thousands of years of wind, rain. I don't get it. Neither do I. Wait a minute. I do. Don't you see? We're back on Earth. Come off it, Kirby. I'm serious. The instruments are all screwed up. Some way or another, don't ask me how. We got turned around, and now here we are, right back where we started. Oh, man, that is rich. Only one thing's missing, a brass band. Maybe they forgot about us. It's mm -hmm. an interesting theory. Except for one thing. As far as I know, Earth has never had two suns in the sky. You're right. But the temperature's perfect. That means they're smaller than our sun. Added together, they put out just enough energy to... to duplicate conditions on our own planet including evolution. And the people learn to build farmhouses exactly like ours. What? If that's not a barn over there painted red, then it's a pretty good imitation of one. What in the name of... Better check it out. Be careful, man. We don't know what we're dealing with yet. What do you call this? A Martian? I'd call it a hound dog. Hey there, boy. How come he's not moving? He's taking a nap in the shade. I don't blame him, do you? What the heck is that? By the barn, it's, it's called a tractor. They were internal combustion vehicles used in the 20th and 21st centuries before the total war. So we are on Earth 300 years ago. Negative. We're not equipped for time travel. Okay, you explain it. I can't. The only thing I know for sure is that we're not on Earth. We are not alone. What are you... Hey! Hey, you over there! By the barn! What's the matter? Can't he see us? He's turned the other way. Looks like he's taking a rest. Leaning on his... His... It's a pitchfork. He was... He was using it to load hay into the wagon. Some outfit. Overalls. Farmers wore them with straw hats. Just like that one. He even has a red bandana in his back pocket. Well, I suggest we ask him the way to the Emerald City. Excuse me, sir. <clears throat> My name is Captain Weber. My men and I... Uh... Sir? Sir, I, I hate to bother you, but that's our ship over there. We've crash-landed. If you can tell us, sir... Sir, can you hear me? What's the matter with him? Seems to be in some sort of trance. Are his eyes open? Yes, but... Move your hand in front of his face. Nothing. As if he's... Don't touch him! It's all right. His skin's warm, but there's no respiration. He seems to be frozen in place. Well, let's move on. It 
say that again. This is giving me the creeps. We'll recon the surrounding area. There may be others. This is what I call a lake. That's what anyone would call it, Pete. Easy. Easy. <sighs> Be sure the bridge will hold. Feels solid to me. We gotta take off these flight suits and jump in. No, thanks. Why not? Well... Go on, say it. You can't swim, can you? Not... as such. Oh, the big scientist. Wait a minute. Uh, maybe we can find some water wings for you. Let's get a move on. We have a lot of ground to cover. Back home, we had a swimming hole. Man, on a hot day, I thought I was in heaven. We'd go skinny dipping. Right in all that pollution. Nah, before the government closed the rivers. They were even fishing it. You could even see them jumping in the air. You ever go fishing, Captain? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. In the mountains? The runoff from the snow was clean. Yeah, you could eat the fish if you wanted to, and not get sick. <laughs> I don't see any fish in this water. You better keep moving. We don't know when the suns go down. We should be back at the ship before dark, just to be safe. Good point. Maybe they don't have fish here. That's a possibility, if the planet's evolution took a different turn. Hey, there's somebody. I don't see anything. On the opposite bank. Clad shirt. See him? Sitting there with a fishing pole? Hey, mister! Hey, mister! Kirby's right. Folding chair, wicker basket, the whole setup. Looks like the guy's got it made. Let's hope this one talks to strangers. Hi there, fella. How's it going? Fish biting today? Mum's the word, huh? Let me try. Sorry to bother you, sir, but you might say we're lost. If if you could give us directions to the nearest town. Don't waste your breath. This one's a stiff, too. Maybe he's asleep. If he is, he's done well for himself. This basket is called a creel. It's full of fish. Quite a haul. Fresh? Mm, it smells like it. Hold on. Is that a bottle of beer next to him? It is indeed. Only, it's empty. Well, where's he got the cold one stashed? Fella, can you hear us? Do you even know we're here? Can't see his face. Lift up the brim of his hat. Okay, here goes. Sorry, nothing personal. I just like to look a man in the eye when I talk to him. Even if he doesn't talk back. What did you do? Nothing. Just barely touched him and he fell over. Well, at least we know he's not a statue. No pulse, like the farmer. But his skin feels real. Sit him up again, exactly the way we found him. <laughs> I get it. Get what? He's off the clock. Way off. What's that supposed to mean? Pete and I used to joke about it in flight school. Now, there are 24 hours in a day, but sometimes that's not enough. You're not kidding. All my life, I've wanted extra time to read a book, write a novel. Or go fishing, spend some time in the country, meet a girl and get married, or just take a nap for crying out loud. But I was too busy. We all were. So the only answer is to fit some extra hours into the day. Hours that don't show up on the clock. That don't count. I don't see... Look at it like this. What if you could stop time? Hmm? For a few minutes, or a few hours. At least as far as everybody else is concerned. Think of what you could do. They stand there, frozen, while you run off and do whatever it is you need to do. Then, when you're finished, you run back and time starts again. They move and walk and talk and go on with what they were saying, and they never so much as know you were gone. <laughs> Is that a plan or what? I wish we could have done something like that on the ship. If I'd had time for pure, uninterrupted thought, I might have... Well, I don't know. Perfected Sheldrake's theory of causative formation while the ship ran itself. That's right, and, and, and get home to find you've won your own Nobel, right? Now, we make planet fall, and we run into these people, if that's what they are, and it's as if we've finally done exactly that, taking ourselves off the clock, at least temporarily. Permanently would be fine by me. Nice theory, Captain. I'm afraid there are reasons, though, why it wouldn't work. 
I am sure there are. It's just a thought. If I were a science fiction writer, I could have some fun with it. But we've got more important things to do, like finding out what options we have now that we're here. Say, I'm hearing things. I hear it, too. Seems to be coming from the top of the ridge beyond that grove of trees. That must be where the town is. We were close after all. Sounds like you got your brass band, Pete. I like it. Maybe they got a ticker tape parade, too. One way to find out. to be on the main street of a Midwestern American town. Ahead of us is the square, complete with steeple, clock, and ivy-covered walls. Captain, did you notice? What's that? There are no hands on the clock. Do we note it? The music's loud. I hope this recorder can pick it up. It sounds like a Sousa march. There's a bandstand, flags, bunting. A sign that says, Inauguration Ceremony, Welcome Mayor Finch. The musicians are all in uniform. Just one thing, they're not really playing. Kirby's right, nobody's moving. Not even Mayor Finch. He's holding a silk hat. A photographer is in front of the crowd, about to take his picture, but nothing's happening. It's like a, like a movie set with a hundred extras all waiting for someone to yell action. The question is... Who's directing? I'm going to look around. Weber, out. The music's coming from that loudspeaker near the platform. It's being piped in from somewhere. Pre-recorded, no doubt. Concert's over. I wonder who turned it off. <sighs> Any ideas, Professor? Well, I suppose it could all be part of a carefully orchestrated illusion. That's as good an explanation as any. Now, maybe we're being made to see and hear what we hoped we'd find here. The sights and sounds of home. But they got it wrong. It's 300 years before our time. Who's they? Or it could be that time itself is somehow suspended in this place. So we really are off the clock. It's all relative. Time may have, in a sense, speeded up for us or slowed down for them. You mean they might actually be moving? It's possible. Why can't we see it? You can't see the movement of a clock's hands. Nevertheless, they move. Yeah, when there are hands. Do you believe what you're saying? Of course not. Hey, everybody. Uh, sir, ma'am, uh, what's the matter with you people? Are we invisible or something? Don't take it personally. By the looks of them, they don't see anything. They might as well be statues. But they're not statues. Here, feel one. You, sir, shake hands with the captain. See what I mean? They feel like flesh and blood. Yeah, Kirby's right. More of the same. Whoever, or whatever, is responsible, they've created a perfect imitation of the real thing all over this asteroid. For what purpose? I don't have a clue. The expenditure of time and effort is considerable. Not to mention the science involved. The skin on these pseudo-people must be a new polymer compound. And the clothing. All duplications of Earth fabrics. I wonder... Nah, never mind. Say it. Well, we must not be the first to land here. But this asteroid's not on the charts. Then, who were they modeled after? Maybe somebody... somebody real is, is still here. Where? Could be anywhere. The streets, the, the buildings. I say we separate. We'll meet back here in an hour. Well, it's better than huddling together like frightened children. All right. Pete, you go that way, Carl. See where the street leads and take some readings while you're at it. All right. I'll cover the buildings along this side, starting with the hotel. Remember, one hour. Are your watches set? Yeah. Yes. Don't ask me what to set it to, though. Earth time or something else entirely.
captain's notes. The awning says the hotel is called the Ritz Arms. Kind of quaint. It would be considered ritzy, I guess, in small town. Glass front. Nothing moving inside that I can see. I should have brought the Visicam to record this. There's a clerk behind the desk, not moving, of course. And, oh, oh, this is classic. There's, there's an alcove off to one side. I can see four men seated around a table. A green lampshade, money. I, I think they're playing poker. <laughs> or they were before they stopped moving. And there's a waitress with a tray full of drinks. The big winner seems to be a little man with a gray mustache. Not your typical gambler. But he's all set to rake in the chips. He looks mighty happy. Hey, you fella. I wonder what cars he's got here. I don't think I'll mind if I take a peek. Oh, four big, beautiful aces. Nice work. Oh, hold on, hold on. If I'm not mistaken, that's a waltz coming from upstairs. Music seems to be in one of the rooms. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, this room is, uh, is definitely occupied. There's a candle at the table. I see an ice bucket and a bottle of champagne. The music is canned. Couple is posed in a slow dance. She has a rose in her teeth, and he's got her bent back in a dip, kissing her throat. But what is she doing with him? Short, ugly man. Looks like he's never had a girlfriend in his life. But she's a real beauty. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm beginning to see a pattern. The theme seems to be dreams really can come true, but whose dreams? Who's fulfilling them? For what purpose? <laughs> Weber out. For now. Find anything? No. At least nothing that moves. Pete? Not really, except for... What? <laughs> you guys better see this for yourselves. Come with me. Where is it? Just around the corner. You're not gonna believe this, but... I think it's what they called a carnival. That's what it is, all right. The Midway. Those booths along either side, people could win various trinkets of low value by throwing baseballs at steel milk bottles or firing toy rifles at targets. I was wondering. A test of skill or amusement. Also the urge to gamble for those with a predilection for obsessive compulsive behavior. What's in the tent? Oh, just some men in swimming trunks. Win $500, go two rounds with Tiger Loomis. Oh. It's not a real tiger. No kidding, genius. Let's have a look inside. That must be Tiger with the stripes on his trunks. Yeah, the one lying down in the ring. Oh, some crowd, huh? Almost as many as the town hall, complete with sound effects. Two pugilists duking it out, as they say. A primitive display of testosterone poisoning. Check out the other guy with his hand raised. That, my friends, is what's known as a pot belly. Yes, but why? Too many carbohydrates, not enough exercise, plus a certain genetic predisposition. Uh, wh but why would he be the one who wins? Must have been a lucky punch. Looks like old Tiger's down for the count. <sighs> Interesting. Creepy. All these imitation people posed every which way. What do we have over there? I believe it's called a sideshow. 
scantily clad young ladies who dance for the crowd, which is primarily male. That's nothing. Check out the stage at the end. See? I was saving the best for last. Get an eyeful of this. Sort of contest, a sign. Beauty queen chosen today. Step right up, gents. You got your blondes, your brunettes, your redheads, your tall ones, your short, stubby ones. Take your pick. I'd say the judges have already made their selection. Cast your eyes on Miss Lakewood County. <laughs> Some bathing suit, huh? Mm-hmm. It was called a bikini. After the location of the first atom bomb test. Of course, if you like them a little more curvy, there's always Miss Midvale. It's a little on the hefty side for me. Personally, I like Miss Vernon County in the strapless white two-piece. And they all lost. Kinda breaks your heart, don't it? The, the one they've chosen with the ribbon and the crown. Miss Wanda Bertolini from Stockton, California. A little long in the tooth, isn't she? Thirty-nine if she's a day. Freckles, frizzy hair, the whole bit. And yet, she's won against all those beauties. Right now we're counting for taste. Perhaps the competition was rigged. Yes, 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 yes. But why? Your Majesty, uh, my compliments to the judges. I don't blame them. They think you're the prettiest one of all. <laughs> Wear it with pride, but uh, tell me something, Your Majesty. What's wrong with you? I mean, you can't even move a muscle, like everybody else in this crazy asteroid. Answer me. Go on. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Answer me. Easy, Pete. Ah, you can have it. Everything about this place is nuts. Where are you going? Wait! <sighs> now, Pete, don't let it get to you. None of us knows what's going on. But until we figure it out... I'm sorry, all right? But you know how long we've been on that ship? Now we sit down and what do we find? We all feel the same way. Sure we do. But it's like somebody's trying to trick us into something or drive us batty. Some thing that doesn't even think like us. But it's got our number. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. You've got to pull yourself together. I'm pulling, all right. But if we just had some idea, some clue about what the deal is here in this crummy place. How are you fixed for ideas, Carl? I don't really have a theory yet. Of course, it's highly improbable, but... So is the fact that we're here. Come on. Any theory is better than none. Well, I've begun to think that all of this... It just might be some sort of museum. Come again, Professor? We're millions of miles from Earth. It's possible that the inhabitants of this planet, whoever they are or were, developed a very advanced technology. Let's say they had a super powerful scanning device based on some new principle. Over the years, they observed Earth and decided to build replicas of what they observed. Perhaps they even took specimens to use as models. That would explain the accounts of alien abductions. If that's true, where are these inhabitants now? Gone, perhaps. Having moved on and left all this behind. They could be in hiding. Then, we'd better explore the rest of it. Or as much as we can in one day. At least they had taste. Take the residential street we're on now. It's right out of the late 19th century. Old growth trees, Victorian houses, why this era? Why any of it? It must have interested them. Though for what practical purpose, I can't imagine. Now maybe just to please themselves. This is the way it was on Earth a few centuries ago. I've seen pictures, the streets, the houses, everything laid out so peacefully. You guys like it here? I would, if I knew it was real. If I could be sure it wasn't all going to vanish in a puff of pink smoke. It's an okay place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. Well, you better get used to it. This is going to be home for a while. Charming. Which one? The largest house, there across the street. Oh, that one's a mansion. Isn't it lovely? Think of the freedom, the space to move about. You want it? It's yours. Yes. That's true, isn't it? <laughs> Why not? I don't think anyone will mind, least of all the old fella in the chair on the porch. <laughs> Another stiff. It's actually quite realistic, the way they've got him sitting there, reading the paper. What's the date on the front page? Hey there, old timer. You don't care if we look around, do you? Check out the inside. Not at all, gentlemen. You are most welcome.
Jeez, Louise! He talks! F forgive us, sir. You all look as though you've seen a ghost. We assumed that you were like the others. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm Captain Weber. The name is Wickwire. Jeremy Wickwire. Ah, a pleasure. Peter Kirby, my navigator. Hi, Carl Myers. How do you do? Can't believe you're real. <laughs> Isn't everybody? We used to think so. Not around here. Oh, uh, the others are nothing to be afraid of. Really, they're not. We have so many questions. I, I, I don't know where to start. We can talk inside. Some tea, perhaps. Please, gentlemen, won't you come in? One lump or two? Oh, don't go to any trouble. It's better than what we're used to. Believe me. I don't know about you, Captain, but I must have my tea this time of day. I wouldn't feel complete without it. Oh, it tastes great. Nice and hot. Beats the heck out of that tang. I'll say. A remarkable collection of artifacts you have here. Artifacts? The oriental rugs, the tapestries, all this furniture. I've never seen anything to compare. It provides a certain level of comfort. Must have cost you a fortune. Oh, not me. Personally, we had it built for a Mr. Let me see, uh, Jenk Jenkins... Jenkinson, I believe it was. You mean the pieces aren't antiques? Oh, heavens no. They were made to the client's specifications. At the last moment, however, he changed his mind, decided he really wanted to be a knight in shining armor. So now he's over in the medieval section, slaying a dragon. Then there's more that we haven't seen. Dear me, yes, we have many sections. Rome, Egypt, the Wild West. But the one we're in right now is very popular. It represents a period when creature comforts were most abundant, before peace in the world became impossible. By the world, you mean? Earth. Mr. Wickwire. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. You see, we are from Earth. Yes, of course. We were on a routine geological flight in search of ore to be mined. Uh, we ran into uh, a meteor storm and, uh, well, it knocked out some of our equipment and put us off course. That was six months ago. Hmm, really? That long? Feels a lot longer, believe me. Please, go on. We saw this asteroid and landed as, as well as we could. But there's no more fuel. We're going to have to stay here until we can repair the communications module and signal for help. They'll think our ship was destroyed without an SOS beacon. I see, I see. Then you're not from the Glades. The, the what? I've been expecting them. I'm due for a delivery. From Earth? May I ask a question about the Earth? Did they, by any chance, have that atomic war? Not as such. A cluster of smaller wars, almost simultaneously. Most of the Earth's surface was destroyed. We're still picking up the pieces. Oh, dear me. That is bad news. More tea, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Wickwire, explain some things to us before we go out of our minds. It, certainly, but you do look hungry. And you can say that again. Let me fix us a light lunch first, hmm? Then we'll talk. No, 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 Mr. Wickmire. Explain some things to us before we go out of our minds. If you like. Where are we? Why, you're in a memorial park. <sighs> a a m memorial? More commonly known as a cemetery. Didn't you know? Uh, please, make yourselves at home. I'll be back in no time. Did he say cemetery? Well, at least we know more than we did. You act like nothing's happened. Nothing has happened, yet. Just give it time. What would you suggest we do? I'd suggest that you... Settle down, fellas. Getting upset isn't going to help. 
Help who? There isn't anybody to help us. That old man's off his rocker. This place is some kind of loony bin. Hey, shut up and sit down. Yeah, well, I tell you, I don't like it. We're sitting around having tea, and we don't even know where we are. It doesn't make any difference where we are. This is where we're going to stay until we can send a distress signal. Unless he happens to have some rocket fuel and a tail fin assembly lying around. So for now, all we can do is make the best of it. Yeah, we don't have to like it, do we? Be patient. Everything will be explained, I'm sure. You mean you trust that guy? A little more trust might have saved our world, Pete. I say something about him is screwy. What's he so happy and well-adjusted about? Well, look at the way he lives. He's got everything he wants, even if it is a reproduction. Quiet. Here he comes. Ah, I've brought some sandwiches and a bottle of wine. I trust we'll make quick work of it. You can say that again. I haven't had a drink in... I don't know how long. And after that, coffee. It's brewing now. Meanwhile, a glass for each of us. Do you mind if I pour? Very kind of you, Mr. McGuire. May I propose a toast? Please. To peace, my friends. Eternal, everlasting peace. I'll drink to that. We all will. Ah, excellent wine. Glad you like it. This is a special occasion. I thought it was worth opening a bottle. Leap for milch, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Mr. Wickwire, we're still a bit confused. You said we were in a cemetery. Uh, what did you mean? Mean? Yeah, why would there be a cemetery here? Perhaps you could elaborate. Certainly. But before I explain the details, you must give me some information. If you like. If your dearest wish could be granted, what would it be? I'm not sure I understand. What would you like to be doing most? Where would you choose to be right now? That's easy. Back on the ship, headed for home. And you, Captain? I'll go along with that. So will I. Splendid. Oh, uh, one other thing. When you left Earth, what was the date? September. No, 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 no. The year. 2280. Really? 2280? When you arrived, I thought you were the men from Happy Glades, but you couldn't be. We're still not following you. What's Happy Glades? The world's greatest mortuary. At least, it used to be. The management hit upon this scheme as a service to the few who could afford it. The scheme being... Why? This little asteroid. Moriarty bought it and paid well to keep it off the maps. For what reason? Simple, really. You see, the plan was to recreate conditions in which the dearly departed would be most happy. A favorite setting, a desired event. For example, if one had always wanted to be elected mayor, he'd achieve his ambition here for all eternity. So, those people outside, they're all... Oh, not all of them. Just the select few. The rest are imitations. Simulacra, we call them, for effect. In other words, this is the place where your dreams come true after you've stopped dreaming. <laughs> yes, that might be a way of putting it. Very good. But a cemetery in the middle of space? Your boss, Moriarty, he could have bought a piece of property anywhere in the desert, say, uh, away from everything. Oh, no. You don't understand at all. Happy Glades promises eternal peace, everlasting peace. You couldn't have that on Earth, now could you? Especially with the wars you've described. He has a point. Let's finish the wine, shall we? It doesn't keep well once it's opened. Thank you. Cheers. Would you like some music? What kind? A somewhat limited repertoire. But there are all kinds of pieces for the player. Piano, popular, classical. Classical might be nice. Ah, yes. Something soothing to fit the mood. Mozart or Brahms. A good choice. I thought so. Drink up, gentlemen, before I bring the coffee. 
Unless you'd like something more to eat. I have some tea cakes in the kitchen. What about you? Me? Yes. How do you fit in? Why? I'm the caretaker. It's my job to make sure that our guests are not disturbed. This mortuary, or whatever it is, uh, when was it built? Let me see. The year was 2177, I believe. It's almost a hundred years ago. That makes you a little on the elderly side, doesn't it, Mr. Wickwire? Oh, you force me to an embarrassing admission. You see, <clears throat> I'm not actually human. When you're gone, I'll go back to sleep, as it were, until I'm needed again. I go on and off like a machine. You understand now? Sure. Nothing complicated about that. He goes on and off. I've apparently been turned off for several decades. One thing, Mr. Wickwire, we're not going anywhere. We can't. We're staying here, at least for the time being. Yes, I know. You said something about when we're gone. Oh, a figure of speech, Captain. I meant departed. Gone on, as it were. Jim, you know what he's saying. What's the matter, Carl? You're pale. And you're perspiring. What in the... Something wrong with the wine. The old man. He didn't drink any of this. You're right. Why? Why didn't you, Wickwire? I told you not to trust him. I told you. Oh, he's poisoned us. We meant you no harm. I realize that, and I'm sorry. Truly, I am. <laughs> Give us the antidote. Give us the antidote. There is no antidote, Captain. Even now, the eternifying fluid is coursing through your veins. It won't be painful, I assure you. Oh. You've got to stop it. Oh, my dear friends, can't you understand? I have no control in these matters. I'm only a machine. But why? Why us? Because you're here and you're men. And while there are men, there can be no peace. Surely you've seen ample evidence of that on Earth. What are you going to do? Hmm, there are several possibilities, but as you said, your preference is to be on your ship. So be it. I'll move you there and arrange you in your natural habitat. And every day for a while I'll come by and check on the display, your poses, the instruments and other details, and I'll touch them up if need be with a feather duster so that the scene is absolutely perfect before I retire to this house and turn myself off until the next ship arrives. I trust it will be a dream come true for you. It will. Won't it? For the love of God, Wickwire. For the love of God. You'll excuse me now, but I must make ready. Oh, and gentlemen, I I do most sincerely wish that you rest in peace. Captain. Goodbye, Captain. Easy, 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 Carl. Easy, Carl. Don't fight it. It'll only work faster. Bill. Bill. I'm scared. Try not to be beat. Captain Weber, 
is Navigator Kirby and Meyer, the geologist, on their last voyage. And now, at their journey's end. All agreed what they wanted most was to be aboard their ship, ready to head home. Now they will have that wish forever. Unfortunately, it's a wish that can only come true in the Twilight Zone.